And we talked about several different things. The first week we talked about uh, the first masquerade when Adam and Eve went into hiding, the first moment they sinned, and we talked about Satan's shame game. And a lot of what it whittles down to in this, this shame game is, is we assume that because of the negative things that have happened to us or that we have done, the only right thing to do is to go into hiding because we don't want people to see what's really going on. We don't want people to know what's really happening in our life. We're frightened about the reality of us sneaking out. And then the following week, right after that, the second in this series, we talked about self-deception. A lot of us don't even know that we have masks on. We've been deceived. We've, had, uh, we've, we've, we've lied so much that that lie has become a truth. We, we've looked through a distorted lens for so long. We've looked at it through a distorted, we, we've had a distorted view of what is real for so long that we've actually begun to believe that distorted view. And last week, this was a really hard one um, for many of us, and I, I really believe that this is something that we need to talk about as a church because a lot of ministers and a lot of churches are afraid and they kind of shy away from this topic. But um, one of the what we talked about last week was hiding sin. Um, some of us have been hiding sin for so long, and we're so afraid to let it out in the open. Um, this is one of those struggles that we all have. When we do something shameful or bad. And we feel a lot of shame because of it, and we're afraid to confess. We're afraid to open up about it. We're afraid to tell others what's going on in our life. And because of that, um, we hide that sin when in community with, with, with other people, with believers and friends and God himself, we are given the support that we need to overcome the struggles that we're facing. And a lot of us are in that place, or a lot of people are in that place where they're just they're hiding sin and we can choose to confess or conceal. But when we confess, we, know that we should know that we confess to a God who forgives. And we should be willing to confess to people because in that we find healing. At least that's what's supposed to happen. And so this morning, we're going to bring this full circle. And I want to talk to you guys about hurt. I want to ask you guys how you're feeling. I want, I want you to be sincere today. Um... One of the most insincere questions I've heard to date sometimes in our interactions, whether it be in public or in the church, is how are you doing? How's it going? What's going on? You know, and we just kind of nonchalantly without much hesitation, when someone says, how's it going? We say, oh, I'm good. You know, or, or you know, without, without a second thought, when someone comes to us and say, what's going on? Oh, nothing much. You know, we just, it's, it's almost like an instantaneous response. We just speak out of automatic, almost autopilot kind of experience where when people ask us how we're doing, sometimes we assume and sometimes it is an insincere question. I mean, they're just asking merely to ask. They're not really interested in how we're doing. And let's be honest, some of us have been guilty of that. Some of us have asked people how they're doing and we don't really want to know. Or... You know, we just really don't want to tell them. We don't want to speak up. We don't want to express to them the things that we're going through. We're afraid that we're afraid that if we open up about our feelings, we're afraid to expose our pain. We're afraid that if we reveal our weakness, it'll leave us more susceptible to attack. For men, we don't want to appear weak. Men, we want to appear strong. We want to appear powerful. And women don't want to fit into a stereotypical mold as, as, as they might reveal what's going on in their lives. And some people just, you know, especially men sometimes, let's be real guys, sometimes we go to them and say, you just need tougher skin. Come on. You know, you need to toughen up and deal with it. You know, come on, let's get through this. We're so afraid sometimes. We're so afraid sometimes to expose what we're going through. We're, we're so afraid sometimes to expose what's happening in our life. The truth is, is every human being in this concept, in this area, fits in one of two places. You've either been hurt or you're going to be hurt. I hate to say it like that, but that's just the truth. You've either been hurt by someone, a situation, a struggle. You've been hurt by perhaps the church. 
You've been hurt by friends. You've been hurt by family. You've been hurt by the people in your life. And if you've yet to be really wounded, there may be a moment in your life where you definitely are wounded. But this is the problem. This is the issue. This is what happens is so many of us are suffering in silence. This is where we're at. So many of us are hiding our hurt. So many of us are suffering ourselves and we're afraid to open up about the things that are going on in our lives. If we took a look around, some of us are perceptive and can notice it. The Bible calls it discernment. We come in contact with people and we look at them, we shake their hand and we ask how they're doing and they say fine or they say things are well or I'm doing good and you look at them and you're like, no, you're not. No, you're not. There's something really the matter here. I'm a pretty persistent person. Usually when I ask somebody how they're doing and they say fine and I notice that they're not really fine, I'll push. That's because I love. I usually try to whittle something out of them because I want to pray. I want to support them. I want to encourage them. But if we take a look around us, if we're honest and sincere, there are a lot of people who are hurting around us. So many have done everything in their power to conceal it. We have trained ourselves and others have trained us in concealing pain. It's just, it's just true. Like, if, if, I can, if I can for a minute be pretty sincere, and this is, this is tough to be honest about the church like this because I love the church and I love what God is doing in the church, but in some ways the church has trained us to act like everything's fine. I've got to be put together you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian. If someone sees that I'm flawed or if someone sees that something's wrong, if, if someone sees that I'm hurting, genuinely hurting, and perhaps even upset with God, then they're going to think that my faith isn't big enough. I got news for you guys. Your suffering does not affect who God is. Some of us believe that if we're honest about where we are, that other people are going to have a misrepresented view of God. But the truth is, is the more we pretend and the more we hide, that's when God is misrepresented. As opposed to when we're honest and sincere about the things that we're facing and the things that we're going through. We've been trained by society to hide our hurts. We've been trained by ourselves oh man i don't want to cry again i don't want to have to explain the story again i don't want to have to go through this again i don't want people to see what i'm going through i don't want to be open and honest about this i've got to deal with this alone this is my issue this is mine i'm not going to bring it up i'm not going to talk about it i'm not going to surrender this issue to anyone because this is my problem and we've we've we we've, we've relented to a place where we're just going to suffer in silence instead of bringing things up to people who can help us and support us. I believe that hiding our hurt is one of the most spiritual paralyzing masks we can choose to wear. Hidden wounds, listen to this guys, hidden wounds will never heal. Hidden wounds will never heal. In fact, hidden wounds will fester and infect and cause more pain. I, I know these are hard words, but some of us need to be transparent this morning. Some of us need to go to some people that we trust and finally say, yeah, this is what's going on. This is what's happening in my life. We're suffering in silence. I want to tell you guys that there is hope beyond the hurt. There is hope beyond the hurt. In, in Psalm 62, 5 and 8, it says this, Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is a, my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in Him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. We find rest in God and God alone. 
That doesn't mean that the situation gets automatically and instantaneously better. Some of us go to God with a prayer because we're hurting or we're suffering. And we say, the only way for this to be better, the only way that I can be okay is if the situation's okay. But you can be okay without the situation being okay. You can be. God can handle that. He can give you peace that's just like, how do I have this peace? This doesn't make sense to me how I can be at peace in this moment. It doesn't make sense to me how God can do that in me. There is hope beyond the hurts. If you are the one hurting, I want to tell you something very important and very critical this morning. In Jeremiah 30, 11, it says, I am with you and will save you, declares the Lord. Here's the truth. We find hope, healing, and comfort in God. We find hope, healing, and comfort in God. I'm going to reveal to you guys three ways in just a few moments, but I want to just, just for a minute, talk about, just just for a minute, talk about this a little bit more. We, We have found ourselves in an endless endeavor to conceal sometimes what's happening inside. Some of us, we're just, we're perfect pretenders. I mean, people just don't see it. I remember in just being transparent about myself in my own life, I remember um, even in middle school training myself to pretend like everything is okay even though my home was a complete wreck. I remember, you know, as an early as elementary school, acting like I'm fine, I'm good, everything's great, laughing with my friends, enjoying life, but inside I was suffering and we, we, we do everything in our power, we do everything in our, in our, in our own way to heal that hurt. We'll, we'll, we'll go through all different routes, we'll do everything we can, we'll, we'll go to uh, relationships and love. For some of the, some of the young people that are growing, and, and this is not just the young people, this is all of us. We, we assume that we're going to find what we need in a relationship. Oh, if I find the one I love, they're going to give me everything I need. That void in my heart, that missing place, all that I ever wanted. If I find the one I love, then it'll be fine. I'll be taken care of. I'll feel better about myself. Or no, no. Some of it, I've even seen parents sometimes expect the newborn children, the children that they have to fill that void, that missing place in their heart. Well, if I have children, then things will be better. If I have a financial stability, things will be better. I'll be happy. If things are, you know, we will go, we will even pursue church itself and church experiences or experiences with God in hopes that one moment will heal the hurt. I remember sharing this with you guys uh, last year. Um, it, I'd been here for a couple of years at that point, and my dad's gravestone is, is down in Newington, New Hampshire. And I had placed all of my attention and focus on this one moment. There were some things that I was still working through because of what I experienced as a child with him. And, and I thought, when I get to the gravestone, I'm going to break down. It's going to happen. I was putting all of my trust in a moment, in a hoped-for experience. And I got there and I felt nothing. I was confused. And it was through that process that God revealed to me that we can't place our hopes in a moment or an experience. We've got to place our hopes in Him and Him alone. We've got to trust God. Don't pursue an experience with God. Pursue God. Don't pursue a moment of clarity or, you know, don't pursue an experience or a moment. Don't pursue church. Pursue God. This is definitely where you meet God. Church is a critical part of our relationship with God. We'll find that out in just a minute. But, but we have got to pursue God. He never promises that you won't hurt, but he promises that you won't hurt alone. Sometimes, as challenging as it is, We've got to pull the mask off and engage God and the people around us to find peace. In Isaiah 57, 18 and 19, it says, I have seen their ways, but I will heal them. He's talking about Israel. This is a promise. He's saying, I've seen their ways that they weren't doing so well. And he says, but I, but I will heal them. I will guide them and restore comfort to Israel's mourners, creating praise on their lips. Peace, peace to those far and near, says the Lord. And I will heal 
them. This is moments after rebuke. Hey guys, I'm going to be completely honest with you this morning. Some of us are dealing with the fallout of being molested. Some of us are struggling with the fact that we've lost a job and we feel obsolete. We feel like we can't provide for our homes or our families. Some of us in this room, we've been hurt by the church. I mean, bad. Some of us have um, made our own poor choices. Some of us have done things that we just shouldn't have done, and we've brought punishment upon ourselves, and we brought agony upon ourselves because of our own bad choices. Some of us are still dealing with the fallout of our parents getting divorced. Some of us are still dealing with the fallout of our own divorces. Some of us are still struggling with alcohol and how it's affected the home. Some of us have been hurt by others. Some of us have hurt people. And we're still trying to address it. We're still trying to deal with it. We're still trying to figure out a way to get through this. There are three things that I want to talk to you guys about this morning. Three ways that God heals. Three ways that God heals. Okay? And I want you to be, I, I just, I want you to be sincere about this pursuit this morning as you hear these things. God heals through his people. Now, this is a hard one. Because this requires honest conversations with the people that you trust. This requires that you find people within this church or within Christian circles. I mean, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to say it just as Christians, but the truth is, is sometimes when we go to support to to find support in people that don't believe the same way that we believe, it's not. Always a good thing. I'm not talking about believing like our specific denomination believes. I'm talking about believing in Jesus Christ. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Brothers and sisters in the Lord. We've got to find those people. We've got to pursue those people. We've got to ask them to help us, to encourage us, to, to be there for us. Romans 12, 15 says, Rejoice with those who rejoice, rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. I like to stand against what society has placed upon the church and say, you know what? We are going to do everything in our power to make this place a safe place. Where people can say, hey pastor, hey friend, hey church person, here it is. Here's what I'm going through. Here's what I'm struggling with. Here's what I'm dealing with. Here's what I'm facing right now. Here's the hurt that I'm facing. And not fear that you are going to be disrespected or mistreated because of that. Some of us are so full of shame because of the things that have happened to us that we have yet to expose them to our to the people that we should expose them to because we find healing in others. I was talking to about this exact subject with the students on a Thursday night at Outbreak. I read this verse, um, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4, Praise be to the God, the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. We know that we receive comfort, but there's a comma and a so there. So that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. There comes a point when we reflect to others, the same comfort we ourselves have experienced from God. And that's not something that we can fabricate or create on our own. I want to challenge you guys with, some of us are are just like, oh, well, I don't know if I can help because I'm just not equipped for that. I'm just not ready for that. I don't know if I can help that. Now, all I'm asking you right now to do is to reflect the comfort that God has given you to others. They don't always need an explanation. They don't always need a reason. Some people have come to me as a pastor and said, Pastor, explain this. And I've been sincere and said, I don't have an explanation for this. But I know someone who does. And someone who can comfort you and encourage you and strengthen you. And in those moments, reflect the comfort that he has given me and reflect that to other people. This should be a place where God heals people. We should identify the church as a safe place for broken people to find refuge. 
Church is a place for us to claim the right as a modern day sanctuary where we can name our sins and ask our questions and be protected and sheltered while we search for grace, forgiveness, and answers. That's what we should do. And so when you come to people and seek help, We should be able to receive healing. You see, because God heals through others. God heals us through people. Not because they're powerful or mighty or they're capable of wonderful and great things. No, no, no. Because because God is working in them. I want to be so much a vessel of God that when people are comforted by my words and my actions, they look at me and say, there's no way that that was just him. Something greater is happening here. God is at work here. God is at work here. Number two, God heals through his presence. I love this. We've got to take it to God. God is infinitely better than our best coping mechanism. God is better than a bottle. God is better than porn addictions. God is better than sleeping pills or perfectionism or materialism or food addictions. God is better than best friends. God is the great I am, period. And he can handle anything that you throw at him. He's not afraid of your difficult conversations. He's not afraid that you come clean. He's not afraid of you standing up and saying, God, I'm done. I'm fed up. I'm frustrated. I feel so alone and so broken. He's not afraid of that. In fact, he welcomes that and wants that. He invites you to that conversation. He asks you to sincerely, honestly, and openly come to him and share What's going on? I said, I read this verse earlier in Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. In Psalm 71, 14, it says, but as for me, I will always have hope. I will praise you more and more. Psalm 46, 1, God is our refuge and our strength and ever present help in trouble. Hebrews 13, 5, because of God Or because God said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. In Psalm 147, 3, he heals the brokenhearted and binds their wounds. In Psalm 91, 1 and 2, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Who is God? He's strength when you're weak. He's a refuge. He's a shelter. He's a hiding place. He's a rock. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's a shield, a comforter. He's your salvation, your provider, your peace, your father, your protector, your rescuer, your healer. What is God? He is everything that you ever will ever, 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 ever need. Ever. It's time to... It's time to be real today and drop the mask and say, God, I'm hurting. He knows. He knows. He knows. And he wants to touch you like no human being can. He wants to heal you like no human being can. He wants to take the suffering and the pain away. He wants to heal you of the sexual assault that you experienced that you still are harboring and hiding inside. He wants to heal you of the negative conversations that you've had with your spouse that they continue to barrage and beat you down with bad and hateful words. He wants to free you from that suffering. He wants to free you from the shame that you feel even in your own relationship with him. He's your healer. He's your healer. See, we find comfort and we find strength. God heals us through people. God heals us through his presence. And this last one is pretty critical. God heals through his son. God heals through his son. In Colossians 9 and 10, pretty amazing. It says, for Christ... 
For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ, you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In the message, it reads like this. I have this up on the screen. Read along with me. Watch out for people who try to dazzle you with big words and intellectual double talk. They want to drag you off into endless arguments that never amount to anything. They spread their ideas through the empty traditions of human beings and the empty superstitions of spirit beings. But that's not the way of Christ. Everything of God gets expressed in him so you can see and hear him clearly. You don't need a telescope, a microscope, or a horoscope to realize the fullness of Christ and the emptiness of the universe without him. When you come to him, that fullness comes together for you, too. His power extends over everything. Christ, he's the one who makes you full. He's the one who satisfies He's the one who fills every void. He's the one who takes care of your longings. He's the one who gives you everything that you need. We've heard this verse over and over again. We read it during communion in Isaiah 53, 5. It says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. The punishment that brought us peace. That sounds so, I mean, just counter. What do you mean punishment and peace? I, I tell students that struggle with cutting this. God was broken open so you wouldn't have to break yourself open. God's son allowed himself to be pierced so you wouldn't have to rip your own flesh. Healing is yours because of Jesus. He is the wholeness that you need. You know, we can pursue relationships. We can pursue things. We can hope that a, a, a substantial financial amount or um, stability, even experiences here, we can hope that all of those things are going to provide wholeness for us in the area of finding the peace that we need. But I assure you of this, that you will never find yourself complete until you found yourself complete in Jesus Christ. You will always be void. Always be missing. Always be lost. Always. Always. You may find counterfeits along the way. Things that kind of work. Things that make you feel a little bit better. Things that are okay. But they'll never give you what he can. They never will. They never will. And unfortunately, I'm one of those people that have pursued those many different things and discovered that the hard way. Take my word for it. Pursue Jesus because he's everything you'll ever need. He's it. And some of you guys in this room, you're suffering in silence. Or you know someone who is. And it's time to be real about it. It's time to open up. It's time to talk to some people. It's time to get in the presence of God. It's time to finally invite the wholeness that only Jesus can bring and allow him to change you. See, we cover up our scars on our hearts and act as if we are not there, effectively closing down our vulnerability and shutting ourselves off from others. We pretend life is great and that we have it all together because, well, we're Christians. We're supposed to act like everything is great and perfect. It seems like we forget that the one who loved us most, the one whose image we bear, is marked with an eternal scar to prove how much he loves us. He offers us his battle wounds for the world to see because it's by his wounds that we're healed. Don't be afraid to bear the wounds. I don't want to like freak you guys out or anything like that, but I can see it in some of you. I can see some of you are hurting. 
It's okay. It's okay to drop the mask. It's okay to let it out. It's okay to seek God, to seek some friends, to seek the wholeness of Christ. It's okay. Because he wants to set you free. He wants to. Let me ask these questions as I close this morning. Number one, what hurt are you hiding? Or hurts? What is it? Let's be sincere. Let's be honest. Let's be real today. What are you hurting? What, what are you hiding? What hurt are you hiding? Some of you, it could have been the church. Some of you, it could have been a family member, a friend. Some of you, it could have been that, that, that loved one that you trusted with everything. Some of you, it could be your own mistakes. What are you hiding? What is it? How will you choose, to, how will you choose refuge in God and others today? Today, right now. How will you choose that? How are you today going to be sincere and honest with yourself and with some people around you and say, enough is enough. I'm tired of hiding this hurt. I'm going to take the mask off. I know it's going to be hard. Vulnerability might cost me something, but it's better than the pain that I'm suffering through right now. And last, how would you begin trusting in the healer who makes us whole? How will you? The message translations of of, of Colossians tells us that without Christ, the whole universe is empty. Without him, there's an emptiness in the universe. But when you come to him, that fullness comes together for you too. His power extends over everything. Are you with me this morning? This is not easy. This is not easy, church. But I believe that beautiful things happen when we open up. Because on the other side of this, you're free people. We're free people. We're not defeated. We serve the conquering king, the creator of the universe, who can step into our, what we feel like, meaningless and insignificant life, He is concerned. Hey, guys, he is worried about you. He concerns himself with you. Let God free you today. Please let God free you today. Let him just take it off. Take the mask off. Just drop it. You'll feel better. Father God, I thank you so much for this morning. God, I thank you for a group that's gathered here. God, it seems very... God, this message is for us. This message is for me, God. I know that you've been speaking to my heart all week. I pray, Father, that as we decide transparency is the way to go, as we get open and honest about where we are, God, that we would no longer try to conceal the hurt, that we would go to our friends, that we would find support and strength in people, that we would go to you, God, that we would seek your presence and find the peace that we need, the refuge, the hiding place, the protection, the shield. God, that we would find ourselves hidden in you and protected. Lord, even in the most challenging and seemingly condemning of situations, God, we find comfort and peace, Lord, in you and you alone. And I pray, Christ, that you would come, that you would invade the souls of these people and that they would find wholeness in you. Complete them. Nothing can. 
Lord, I pray over the next week for some good crying, for some good honesty, for some revelation about brokenness, that we would no longer allow ourselves to be crippled by what we're suffering in silence with, but that we would open up, that we would discuss it, that we would share it, that we would be real, that we would be transparent. And as our friends shoulder us, as you lift us up, God, as you, Jesus, fill our hearts completely and make us whole, that we would be a testament of how powerful and amazing our God is, that over any situation, any struggle, any difficulty, any problem, any hurt, you help us to overcome. You set us free. Pray for freedom today, God. For these people... The people who hear this later, God, I pray for freedom today. Come to them, Lord, and set them free. Set them free. If you're with me, say amen.